A Malacanang official says President Rodrigo Duterte himself ordered that Rappler reporter Pierre Anada be barred from entering Malacanang Palace. The Presidential Security Group on Tuesday morning stopped Renada from entering the new executive building in the Malacanang compound. After calls were made, the PSG informed Renada she could enter the NEP but not the palace itself. No reasons were given for this. Internal House Affairs Chief Jopi Avancena says he was instructed last night by the President to tell the PSG to bar Renada. GMA News also quotes Avancena as saying the ban includes Rappler CEO and Executive Editor Maria Ressa. As how long the president wants Renata prohibited from entering Malacanang, Avancena says, quote, He said you are not allowed inside. That's it. Not only today. Duterte apparently gave the order after watching the Senate hearing on the Philippine Navy frigates deal, where Special Assistant to the President Bongo accused Rappler in the Philippine Daily Inquirer of reporting fake news on the Navy project. As why Duterte gave such an order, Goss says he can no longer answer that. Apparently, the president did not relay his order to key palace officials, including presidential spokesperson Harry Roque. Roque says he was not aware of the order or who issued it. He adds he even had to clarify the matter with Executive Secretary Salvador Majaldea. Majaldea supposedly told Roque that Rappler can cover Malacanang events pending the final court decision on the Securities and Exchange Commission order revoking Rappler's business license. But shortly after, Senior Deputy Executive Secretary Menardo Guevara says Rappler can no longer do so unless its reporter is accredited in some other capacity. Guevara says there has been a little miscommunication with Roque. He says, quote, The ES's position as relayed to spokes Harry is this. Unless the CA issues a TRO against the SEC ruling, Rappler's accreditation with the Malacanang Press Corps has accordingly ceased. Guevara adds, quote, Consequently, you may not cover media events at the palace as an individual journalist unless you get accredited in some other capacity. This is the first known incident after the Marcos regime where a Philippine president specifically banned a journalist, more so a member of the Malacanang press corps, from entering Malacanang for official coverage. During his presidency, Joseph Estrada briefly banned Philippine Daily Inquirer reporters from covering his impromptu chats with the media in his official residence, but did not keep them from entering Malacanang premises for other coverage. At the time, Estrada accused the Inquirer of unfair reporting on his presidency. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte jokes China should make the Philippines its province. Duterte makes a joke Monday during the anniversary of the Chinese Business Club, saying Chinese President Xi Jinping himself vowed not to build any structures on Scarborough Shoal. He says, quote, If you want, just make us a province, like Fujian. Duterte adds, quote, Province of Philippines, Republic of China. Duterte says negotiations for joint exploration between China and the Philippines are underway, even mentioning the possible sharing scheme between the two nations. He says, quote, Because the oil is joint exploration, we will have the biggest share. Two-thirds will be ours, one-third yours. Duterte admits China is building military bases in the West Philippine Sea, but he says it would be silly for anyone to think Beijing will use such military assets against the Philippines. He claims China is just building up its defense capability against the United States. Duterte says, quote, It's really intended for those who China thinks will destroy them, and that is America. We aren't part of that. A glitch on the braking system of one of the trains of the MRT3 sends passengers walking the tracks Tuesday morning. Passengers are unloaded from the southbound train at 6.32 a.m. between Ortigas and Shaw Boulevard stations. The MRT3 management says the glitch was caused by electrical failure in the train's braking system. It says operations are still normal despite the breakdown with six running trains, down from the target of 10 trains daily since February started. This is the third time the train system broke down within a 48-hour period. MRT3 operations started late on Monday due to two power glitches. The MRT3 has recorded 37 glitches since the start of 2018, or an almost daily breakdown. The Senate approves the Lifetime Cell Phone Number Act, which seeks to let consumers keep their cell phone numbers for life even if they switch to another service provider, change subscription plans, or switch between prepaid or postpaid. Senator Sherwin Gachalian's proposed measure is passed with a unanimous 20 affirmative votes. Gachalian says the bill will give consumers the freedom to choose the provider that will give the best value for their money without having to lose or change their mobile numbers. The bill will punish telcos with fines up to 1 million pesos or with total revocation of their operating franchises if they withhold the benefits of mobile number portability to a subscriber within 24 hours after completing the porting application. Telecom provider Globe says it supports the initiative and will work with the National Telecommunications Commission on the implementing rules. 
Smart has yet to comment on the bill. Gachalian says cell phone numbers should become an extension of every subscriber's so-called digital identity. Senator Panfilo Lacson also amended the bill to remove interconnectivity fees that charge subscribers for calling or texting across different networks. Users are currently charged with 2 pesos and 50 centavos per minute for calls and 15 centavos for text messages to different networks. United States President Donald Trump questions former President Barack Obama's supposed inaction to prevent Russian meddling in the 2016 election. Trump's latest tweets come amid the probe into his campaign's alleged collusion with Russia to interfere in the 2016 polls. The U.S. president has repeatedly denied the allegations. He tweets, quote, Obama was president up to and beyond the 2016 election, so why didn't he do something about Russian meddling? Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller last week indicted several Russians accused of masterminding the election interference. Mm-hmm.